All right, welcome, welcome, Insurance Syndicate family. It is that time of the week again. It is October 17th, it's 10.30 a.m., and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. We had to postpone last week because of Hurricane Milton, Mm -hmm. but we are back, we are back in action, and we have a very special guest that I'm excited to introduce today, a good friend of mine, and somebody that's just out there crushing it, doing so many different things. So he went from transforming car dealerships to massive success to taking that success to the insurance industry as an entrepreneur himself. He started in 2012 as a scratch agent and built a $17 million agency from scratch. He's also a mentor. He's a coach for Evolve to the Elite. He's a real estate investor. And then he's also a founding board member of Process Sports Academy. He's a man of faith and operates his business in his life through that lens. A big proponent of fitness, the American dream, loves collecting basketball cards. And he is just moving and shaking in the insurance industry. I am proud to introduce Mr. Tom Patterson. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? Yeah, I thought that, you know, we were going to do the most Florida thing ever and do a live broadcast during a hurricane and just not let it stop us. But um, yeah, thanks Believe for it or not, me that was actually my plan, but we couldn't figure out the power and the internet. I was actually going to set up a table outside in the middle of the storm and then yeah. uh, show people how to show up in the middle of the storm in their life. But that didn't kind of work out the way I wanted it to. So. I figured I thought in my head, I saw an American flag just waving in the breeze. Yeah, and just I was like, like shirtless doing the ask the expert show. <laughs> tree falling (laughs) yeah well i'm glad i'm glad we could make it work i know we've been trying to get together for a while i think really highly of you guys and what you do uh and the value you guys bring so uh should be fun yeah yeah no absolutely and i'd love to kick it off with one of the first questions here is uh you know you're a big person uh that's a proponent around building a legacy um, you know, beyond sales and beyond like the day to day and the numbers. So in the fast paced environment of, you know, car, car dealerships to insurance, um, how did legacy become an important thing to you? And what is, um, you know, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind one day with all the big things that you're doing in business? So for me, it starts with my dad, right? And a lot of us who have a strong father figure, um, kind of feel that way. So my dad um, is my hero. He's the smartest guy I know. Um, I'm very lucky to have him in my life and, and alive. But he came to, um, you know, he only has maybe what he says is a fifth grade education. Grew up on a farm in Scotland and um, did all the dirty work on a farm and fixed things really good with his hands. Moved to Jamaica when he got uh, an opportunity to help open up the first BMW dealership in Jamaica. Um, as a young kid, he was like 19, 20, moved to from frozen lands of Scotland to the tropical paradise of Jamaica. Like what kid wouldn't want to do that? So he jumps at the opportunity to do that and um, starts running, help run the BMW dealership there, uh, sells Bob Marley, his first BMW, uh, which was cool. You know, BMW, Bob Marley and the Whalers. It's kind of an easy sell when, when you spell it out for him. Um, but his resiliency to leave not have much and work his way up to the top, leave Jamaica after he meets my mom, um, gets married, leaves Jamaica. And at the time in the early eighties, there was not a lot of money that you could take out of Jamaica. The government was in shambles with a lot of uh, distress going on and you couldn't take money out. So we came to America, me and my brother, my mother and father with about $300 each and suitcases of pots and pans. Cause that's what we could take. Um, and uh, my dad, uh, he doesn't tell the story very often. He's not very proud of it. But uh, we had a, a knife in our kitchen drawer when we were growing up, and it was from Denny's. Um, and he had to take that knife um, home uh, after dinner at Denny's because we didn't have it. And um, so one day he went back, and of course he returned that once he had made it. But that he kept that knife to re- to remind himself how hard you have to work to make it. And he grew, and then he 
just went crazy in their automotive business and did really, really well for himself, rose to the top, um, did, you know, a lot of great things there, ended up retiring with Hendrick Automotive as Rick Hendrick's right-hand man running car dealerships all across the country, 80 car dealerships uh, with him. So that legacy is instilled in me uh, that even without an education, uh, if you have breath in your lungs and a will and, and fight uh you can burn the ships leave your country no yep. nobody and you can make it happen if you work hard um so that that example is instilled in me and then hmm. i have eight eyeballs in my house <laughs> looking at me with my four kids uh going hi hey, how is this guy going to make it work how is this does this stuff really the things he's talking about the things he's living does it really work can it impact my life you know as a father to, to, to the children and um so that kind of drives me every day to make the most out of every single day um and then to promise to my employees and the people that work for me um to make sure that they're getting the most out of the opportunity right um and i've i've been blessed um to hit rock bottom a few times and come out of that and and know what that feels like and um you know, just have confidence in myself that no matter what the world brings with me, um, there's purpose in my life. And if I'm working in that purpose, we are going to be okay. And it's proven time and time again that um, doing the right thing is always the right time to do the right thing. And you will get there eventually. So, um, you know, a lot, lot there going on, but le legacy is the important thing. Right. None of this stuff. I can't take you guys with me when we die. Um, hopefully we all go to the same place. I can't take my possessions with me when we die. Um, but I can leave behind what I stood for. Right. Yep. And, and, and if I made the world a better place and I helped people realize that hopefully they got a little closer to God uh, and, and built that relationship, then then my legacy on earth will be complete. But uh, that's something we all got to work for. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Love that. And uh, agree with everything that you said. And I mean, that's just an incredible story. I mean, that's just the, the, the foundation right there, the bedrock of the American dream. So like hats off to your dad and your family. I mean, that's just an incredible, powerful story of uh, perseverance, which kind of leads me into the next question you mentioned there. A lot of times was that resilience, right? And I think there was a lot of resilience. It sounds like in the face of failure, so when it comes to starting an insurance agency with no experience, there must have been moments of doubt. And maybe mm -hmm. can you share a story about a time that you almost gave in, almost gave up, almost wanted to walk away, but you kept going and what it was deep down that kept you keeping on, keeping on that allowed you to be here in front of us today? Uh, are we talking about this morning? <laughs> right. I mean, uh, as an entrepreneur, that's just, you've got that, you know, there, there's, it should be, there. there's a healthy fear that you're not doing enough. You're not thinking big enough. And, and you know, somewhere out there, someone else is doing more than you. And they're, and if you meet, they're going to beat you. Right. So that's, that's the competition for, to be in business is, is real tough. Um, I mean, how deep do we want to go with this? I mean, rock bottom is rock bottom. Rock bottom is addicted to every drug you could possibly imagine. Um, you know, being put in handcuffs, not 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 fulfilling your destiny, making bad choices, um, having bad relationships, and then rising up from that and, and believing in yourself and, and finding your purpose in life. Um, you know, there's there's times where then opening a business scratch with no experience in, in, in insurance. I remember I was going through agent training in Chicago uh, and <laughs> I'm sitting in the front row and I don't know anything. Like I literally know nothing. And I'm surrounded by people who worked in agencies before they they came from other companies and stuff. And the, the instructor uh, who's a good friend of mine today, uh, you know, he's asking like, you know, talk about BI limits. So I raise my hand. I go, uh, what's BI limits? He goes, Oh, bodily injury. I go, oh, okay. What's spot of the injury? <laughs> I didn't know, you know, so I, I had to pay attention. I had to go really, really back to basics and learn it and, and really dive in um, and to continue to learn. And then we open up and that stress of being scratched with no income coming in, no re re renewals coming in, uh, not having people 
in your corner that have any experience either. I'm leading a bunch of people in my team that don't know what they're doing and having to figure it out literally on the fly, building the plane as it is flying. Um, you know, success is the only only option. That's the only thing we had with success. We were going to be successful. Uh, we were to the point where we were running so thin that on our margins that we would go to, to, to lunch. There's a little Caesars next to us. Um, and we would go get a $5 hot and ready, split it and grab a, a stack of napkins. And those stack of napkins, that was our toilet paper for the agency. So how thin were the margins? They were with less than one ply. I mean, it was, we were <laughs> running tight. Um, so wow. man, yeah, it's, uh, it's always going to be adversity. And for me, I keep that with me. It's uh, there's something that if I don't let that, if I let go of that rope, um, then you move too far back. You have to, I, you know, even with seventeen million dollars of premium and climbing, I still feel that it's day one. Yeah, right? I still have that day one attitude that it's me versus everybody, um, and I, I've got to get up and make it work. Yeah, I think I think that's something that comes intrinsically because I feel that way a lot of time too. It's like day one because when you come from the bottom. There's always that fear. It's almost like sometimes like a small PTSD, even mm -hmm. though it might not be true, you got that fear that you could go back to zero one day and you're always trying to un outrun that monster, out chase that monster. So there's never a risk of feeling like you're going to zero. And I think that's why, you know, if you look at anybody that's earned their success, just like you have in life, right? Those are the people that become good stewards and know how to tend to that success. Where if you see somebody, the, the lottery mentality that won the lottery, it's, it's, it's here one day and it's gone tomorrow. It's because they didn't learn the lessons to become a good steward of that. So I think there's, there's something to be said about, you know, during those times of adversity, we talk a lot about on this show in faith. And it's almost like every story, my story, your story, many others that have been on the show that were in that place of rock bottom. It wasn't happening to them. It was happening for them. And it was opening the door and pushing you. Uh, to your limits, pushing you to your potential where your back is up against the wall and you either have to give in and give up or you have to transform into that person and allow that pressure to turn you into the diamond that you need to be to be at the helm and be a good captain of your ship. And I think it's those challenges that really always lead to the success uh, in somebody's life because it's going through the obstacles. This is no different than going to the gym. And you're picking up those barbells and then one day you start lifting a little bit heavier weight and then a little bit heavier weight. And before you know it, you're far more capable and the things that you worried about on day one in your business and you couldn't handle on day one, they're just like a blip and you have much bigger problems and a much bigger capacity and capability to deal with that new subset of problems as, as you grow. So I look at that as just, you know, anybody in that place and that valley of despair, I like to call it. Don't let that discourage you. Let that encourage you because that means that God's probably put you in the right place at the right time. And you're at the beginning of that destination on your way to greatness. And those, mm -hmm. it's going to be those challenges that are going to build you into who you need to become uh, to, to achieve that greatness. So I love everything you said. Yeah, man. Like and I, the people that I mentor and, and I talk with, sometimes they come to me, they're in tight spots, right? They, they yep. feel like, they're they're in a corner and I, i'm i'm just really enthusiastic because that's the launching pad that's when you're put into that that corner you're you got no place else to go i'm kind of excited for that person because this is the awakening this is where it's going to happen for you do i do i want you to be in a bad position of course not could we skip it yeah of course we would want to skip it but that that's that's the the genesis that's what's happening that's where the match hits the charcoal yep. before you cook the ribeye that's where it's happening it's it's going to happen right now so you can't skip it i'll tell you a quick story my dad like i said really really successful in the car business and i wanted to follow in his footsteps and i got my dream job i was i got promoted to manager of this car dealership i was 28 years old no idea what i was doing none so i called my dad and my dad i got the job it's going to happen we're doing it he's like cool I said, I need your help. I need to know everything. And he's like, all right, come over to the house. So I go over to his house and, um, and I bring the financial statements because in the car business, the financial statements is like the blueprint. You can see everything that's going on. You're spending too much money here. You, you're not efficient here. It's a lot of X's and O's. So he takes that and he puts it to the side and he goes, I got something for you. I'm like, great. I'm all ears. And he pulls up this huge box 
of books. And in it were all the books that he went to the library and he went to the bookstore and purchased dusty old books from 1960, 70 and all like, like, you know, and they're good books. The ones that, you know, they're the bedrock of you know, Del Carnegie, Zig Ziglar's, the, oh, yeah. you know, uh, John Maxwell's, the, all that stuff. Right. Um, and he was, I'm not going to tell you how to do anything until you go through this book. And he says it in a very Scottish accent that I won't do, but it's, it's, it's very <laughs> thick. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, you can't skip the steps. I, I, I can't just give it to you because it wasn't given to me. I had to go and buy these books and read them, become a better leader, become a better communicator, become a better motivator. That's the secret. Yep. And I said, oh, my God. All right. So I went home and I started reading books. And I read and read and read and read. And I got more confident and I started building my, my, you know, how to be a leader, how to be a manager through that in real time. Um, and it's, it's, it was one of the most hectic, stressful times in my life. But at the same time, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be anywhere where I am today. Like you have to do the work. You can't skip it. You know, everyone wants the, the bullet, right? The silver bullet of how do I get there quick? You can't. You know, um, you know, and sometimes you can fake it till you make it, but while you're faking it, you better be learning something quick. Oh, hundred percent. That's, that's part you know, of the problem can, too, is like so yeah. many people get in that place of either over analysis paralysis, or they get paralyzed at the point that they got to start putting in the work and then they never get started. Right. And, oh. and I think you can make your heart, your life hard. One of two ways you can sit in a setback for a good majority of time, or you can be continuously putting in the work and getting better, just like you said. And then eventually it's not going to happen overnight. But then you look at the paths of those two different types of people in life, the people that, you know, they're always, uh, I say this time and time again, there's two different types of people. You got somebody that's always negative, that's always seems to be in the same place, the person that can never catch a break. But then you got that other person that seems like they got the Midas touch. Anything that they do turns the gold. Anything that they do turns into a win. Anything that they do turns into success. And it's not that those like one person is better than the other in terms of being a, a better human being or they were born with a, a gift and the other one wasn't. It's their mindset and they're putting, you know, where, where, their atten where their attention goes, energy flows. And when they're trying to solve the problem, when they're trying to build versus sitting in that place and never getting started, you know, I really think that's the difference between those two people. And yeah. so, sometimes it might just be crawling forward in a matter of inches, but eventually those inches turn into feet, the feet turn into yards, the yards turn into miles, and then you're taking strides and miles with momentum and that's what I like to call the flow state. When you get in the flow state, it's like everything becomes magnetic and you just one win turns into two wins, turns into 10 wins. And then you, you just off off to the races. Yeah. And uh, one of the one of the next questions, I know we were just going into mentorship and you're talking about some of the people that you mentored. I'd be curious with a coach of Evolve to Elite. What one piece of advice that you find yourself repeating over and over to mentees that's maybe that aha moment you want every mentee to have uh, as you being the mentor. Uh, no, well, there's a lot, but number one, get a coach, uh, get a coach that's doing it. That's in the business that you're doing that has a success that you want to have. Um, what I tell those folks is, is that we keep going back to is value. It's just value. You're right. So if, if I'm doing the job, you're doing the job and the guy down the street's doing the job and someone's going online and doing the job, what's the difference when it's all the same rates, it's all the same demographics, it's all the same lead sources. What's the difference? Why is someone else being successful and that other person's not being successful? Difference is value, right? Yep. What value are you and your agency or you and your team or you and your business bringing when I started the the moment that I said I'm doing this, I'm, I'm becoming an all estate agent. I was in a conference, an entree leadership conference with Dave Ramsey, um, and I don't agree a lot with what he says, but there's one thing that he said. You know, he was talking to landscapers and and uh, people who do cutting grass and all that stuff. And one guy was having a great time. And this is 2010, 2011. Um, one guy was having a great time hiring people, hiring trucks, moving forward in life and just crushing it. But his, sh his shirt was pressed and he had a name tag and he wore little uh, plastic booties when he came into the house and he did a little door hanger after he serviced the person's yard. And then the other person he talked to, same city, 
same demographics, same vertical, was completely struggling. Oh, I hate this. I can't make any money. This is ridiculous. I, you know, uh, I, no one wants to, to spend money to do the law. They want to do it themselves. Same thing, same opportunity. The difference was the business owner and the mindset of the business owner. And I heard that. I'm like, man, put me in, put me in any industry right now and I'm going to crush it because I can believe in myself and I know how to provide value. Um, so we always go back to value. And the second KPI, right, that, that we, I want to track is emotion. Um, value and emotion. Are, are you bringing an emotion to the table? When, when you're talking to your clients, when you're giving quotes, are you bringing an emotion? You know, um, have you made a customer laugh? When was the last time that you try to make a customer laugh? And I know in Florida, it's tough. We've got huge rate increases. We've got companies going out of business. We have hurricanes hitting us left and right. But when have you tried to make an impact and brighten someone's day with laughter? Right? Absolutely. Like, when was the last time you studied humor? You know, like I grew up reading the comic books and, and comics, Far Side, Garfield, um, you know, Dilbert, stuff like that. And then I would, I would, I watch, you know, Miss Doubtfire and Patch Adams and, and and stuff that was just funny to me all the time. And I learned how to be humorous just by watching other people studying humor, right? And then. Uh, everything I do it, when I'm talking and and, and, and quoting people or, or explaining things, I use a lot of analogies because I think people connect with analogies a lot. Yep. Um, but that's a great way to bring emotion to something that is, you know, so if it's about the number, you're going to lose. So you bring in the emotion. And, uh, you know, Dave, you're probably one of the best persons I know when it comes to bringing value. I mean, I think you are oh, thank you, pretty much Mr. Value in your businesses. Um, no one's going to outvalue you. And I can say that pretty confidently when, when it comes to things that you're doing. Um, and it could be an invitation to something. It could be, uh, hey, try this thing for free. Um, hey, this is working for me. Maybe it could work for you. Yeah. It, it doesn't cost much. Oftentimes it costs nothing, but you're providing value. And for an insurance agent, you know, you could say, yeah, you need to get your roof replaced. Or you could say, hey, you need to get a roof replaced. And most of our customers who have been in your position have used this roofer because they provide financing. And they got a good financing program where you don't have to make a payment for a year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now they're getting the roof replaced and you're getting the contract. You know, and that roofer is probably going to move all their commercial business to you and 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 refer people to you. Yep. You know, like how many times did that thing come up, but you don't put value in there when you could and it's not difficult it doesn't cost you anything um and we overlook it because it's all about the close ratio it's all about the lead volume it's all about you know the employees and my bottom line and profit and loss it's hard to track value it's hard to track emotion but you better start doing it are you going to be tracking red numbers instead of green numbers absolutely and then there, there's a few things I want to unpack there that I heard, you know, one, like I'm a big believer of that when it comes to value, I think as Zig Ziglar said, if you help enough other people get to where they want to go in life, you're never going to have to worry about your own destination. And I truly believe that whether that's your customers, whether that's the people around it you love and care about the most, whether that's your team members, if you truly come in and you serve them and help them hit their goals and you leave them better off and you leave their lives better off, well, there's going to be that law of reciprocity that kicks in. Um, where they're going to, in return, help you get to there. Or if you have your team members, they're in alignment with your assignment. You're helping them get to where they go. And if they get to their destination, you intrinsically get to yours. So I think, you know, value, value, value. That's a big thing that I've lived by being that servant to other people. So a hundred percent wholeheartedly agree. And then, uh, you know, I think there's something to be said about people remember how you made them feel. Right. Mm -hmm. And yep. we're not in the business of selling insurance policies. We're in the business of building those relationships. And then you got to ask yourself in that at the end of that relationship, at the end of that call, at the end of that conversation, how did you make that person feel? And you know, I think if you start to ask those right questions to yourself, you start to take a different posture, you start to become that servant and you start to be intentional about making people feel a certain way. And in, in turn, when you do that, you end up feeling a certain way and it has this profound impact on everything you're trying to do and everything in your business. And then, you know, I'd say the last thing is 
uh, where you put your attention, right? That's where you get your intention. It's the same Mm -hmm. thing. Like our brains are pretty powerful. Like that's why, you know, you buy that new Kia, right? What do you see on the road automatically? You see Kias everywhere because wherever you're giving your attention to our brains process 60,000 thoughts a day and we can't possibly remember all those different thoughts. So it prioritizes what it thinks is most important to you, which a lot of times is your input, your feedback, your, your self-talk. So if you're one of those ones, Hey, it can't work. It's not going to work. Negative, negative, negative. Well, your brain's going to actually prioritize that as what's most important to you. And it's going to put more negative things in your life. It's going to put more negative things in your business. It's going to put more negative things into your relationship. But if you got that lens that what you're talking about, what you're looking through, And you keep putting that out in the world Well, your brain's going to prioritize more of that. You're going to see more of that from other people. You're going to be placed around other people that have that like similar vision and mindset. And then that's going to just, you know, perpetuate. So you got to be very careful. I think with your thoughts, with your self-talk and, you know, all of those different things. So those are the three things that I impact of everything that you said there, which are absolutely brilliant. Yeah. You got to guard it. Um, And one thing, like a lot of things is, 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 is more simple than we think it is. You know, when we wake up, how, do, how are you starting your day? Like, what does that really look like? You know, what yep. decisions are you making right when you wake up? Are you deciding to have a good day or deciding to have a bad day? You know, well, I want to decide to have a good day, but how does that process look? Do you have a process for deciding? Probably not. Yep. You know, what are the first decisions that you're making? You know, for me, I dress very similar. You know, I have white shirt. I have about 10 of these white shirts. Um, and I'm same kind of pants, same kind of things. I wear the same things almost every single day. I don't decide what I'm wearing. I've checked that off. You know, I'm wearing the same things over and over. My breakfast is the same thing over and over. Um, you know, the things that I that don't need to be thought of and making decisions, when I hit my desk and I've got high value decisions to make, I don't have decision fatigue. I haven't mm-hmm. just been you know thinking about oh i gotta what am i putting in my kids lunchbox i already know yeah right I, I, all the things that i can automate that i can get into a routine and take that off my plate i don't want to make decisions about that i don't make waste my my sixty thousand decisions a, a day on stuff that should be routine i'm going to offload that and make it very very predictable i'm not i'm not I'm just automatic so when I get to the office and I've got hard things to think about, tough choices to make, I have the bandwidth left to do that. Um, you know, I talked to some people who are just completely exhausted at the end of the day. Yep. But they're not doing roofing. They're not laying, laying pavement. You know, they're not doing carpentry. But they're exhausted. And it's because you're, you're wasting time making decisions on things that don't matter. Yep, and they're yeah. having that decision fatigue, and then there's yeah. they're, they don't have a plan coming into the day. And I found the exact yeah. same thing: is routine is absolutely everything. Yeah, that's why I live by this one percent rule. Because a lot of times we're just trying to compare ourselves to somebody that's on year ten of the journey when we're maybe on day one or year one, right? And you can't you can't do that. But it's like, what if you just looked at things through the lens where every single day I'm just trying to get one percent better in every major aspect of my life one percent better in my faith one percent better in my family and my relationships one percent better in my finances one percent better in my health and wellness and then unpack that into a routine you know i'm gonna wake up at 5 a.m i'm gonna make sure i get my workout routine in done boom like i already got momentum in the day when it comes to my health boom i'm gonna eat that right meal plan get my supplements in i'm gonna sit there and spend time with my son after i'm done with all that at like 6 30 a.m spend a time an hour with my son with my wife so i'm intentional about getting that one percent in getting one percent mm-hmm. better with my family like i'm going to spend time into my faith so by the time nine o'clock rolls around i already have tremendous moment- momentum in every aspect of life and again there's something to be said about when you have that momentum it puts you into that flow state where things come easier and you're not operating through a lens of chaos as that firefighter trying to get everything done and yeah. then barely survive and exhausted at the end of the day like you talk about and, and you're not putting off uh, not procrastinating the hard stuff. Yep. Right. Because you feel energized that you have the time and energy to handle the hard stuff. Right. You know, Mark Twain famously said, if, if your job is to eat frogs, eat the biggest one first. Right. Yep. Just, then all the rest eat, are easier after that. Yeah. After you, you tackle the, the biggest frog possible, the rest. Okay. It's easy. It's just only going to get easier, but you don't do that when you've, you're already tired, you're already stressed out, you know, um, you're running behind. There's no routine. 
So it's, it's um, like I said, things can be simple if you simplify them. Um, and most people don't want to do that. They, they want to have choices. They want to, you know, um, change things to, to, to improve and all that. But a lot of this stuff is, is, is really, really simple. Um, if you just stop and come up with a plan, I think anxiety really creeps in when there's no plan. Um, yep. mm-hmm. because there's, you know, it's just up in the air and, uh, most people don't want to start the plan. They just, they want to get to the, the finish line. They don't want to do the planning, you know, and it takes a couple of minutes to do some planning, get a routine, work the routine, tweak it if you need to, obviously, obviously, but most of the time it's just getting started on a simple path. I had a, um, a mentor back in like 2018, um, that worked for the Grant Cardone organization. He was a VP in the company and we were having just a check-in, you know, sit down meeting. He's like, what's your, what's your goal here? And we came into some, some different goals. And one of them was a financial goal. And I was like, well, I want to become a millionaire, you know? And he's like, well, are you a millionaire? Like, no, he's like, wrong answer. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, you have to become the millionaire before you get the million bucks. It's not the other way around, man. Like the time you wake up, the way you operate, the books you read, the amount of practice you put in on your communication, the people you associate with, that has to become your life now. And then the money will show up after. It's not the other way around. And now as a father myself, I'm able to see where like certain influences, certain thought patterns can totally change or derail his day or put him on the right track. So I'm curious for you as not only a coach, but also a father of four, like what are some of the aha moments you've had being a leader, being a dad, being a coach, where maybe through having to help guide others, you've realized some things about yourself. I'm curious if you kind of see your reflection through those processes. And if you've had anything just in the last couple of years that you're like, I was teaching them and I didn't even know that. Like yeah. any of those big moments for you. Um, you know, sometimes when, when you get a chance to put, the, you know, where the rubber meets the road moments, you know, you've read the books, um, you haven't gone through the stuff that was in the books, but it's in there. Like one day I might use that. Um, Boy, my kids give me the opportunity to use that stuff sometimes. Um, and they're great kids. Uh, I have, I'm blessed with some great kids. Uh, my oldest is 16, and uh, he's involved in high-level basketball, a national high school basketball team where they'll travel a country this year playing the top-level basketball teams. Um, and he's on a team with other really good players. Uh, so like, they're not playing – football in the fall and also basketball or you know they're just really good basketball players and they all have the same goal which is to go to high level d1 schools and and play professionally um so there's this thing sometimes that happens where you lose confidence right and and um you know other people want to take your starting spot they want to get more shots than you they want to have more publicity than you all that that is going to happen and it happens in basketball and it happens in life and it happens in relationships. Um, so learning how to be confident in yourself um, and, and, you know, which I've had to do when there's no one else around and, and learning to, to keep your integrity um, through that, you know, doing the right thing when no one else is watching. Um, mm, that is tough, right? When the camera's off and you're scrolling and you have free reign on the internet, what are you looking up? Hmm. You know, where's your integrity at? Are you really believing the things that are being preached to you and you're regurgitating? Does your browser history match your statuses? <laughs> right? You know, like, so like, those are the moments that we, we get to stop and say, hey, my, my son's name is Gavin, you know, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll text him often. And there's little reminders about, you know, dominating the day. Um, you know, don't like, don't, it's you versus everybody. It's you get, you got to fight for what's, what's there, push through the hard stuff. The good stuff is in the hard stuff, you know, get uncomfortable. Um, so, and then my daughter, who's, who's equally talented in basketball, she might be even better. Um, who knows? We'll see. Um, you know, she has her challenges and, and, and stuff too. And it's just, it's just a, a wonderful moment, um, where it becomes real practical, you know, the things that you've learned and, and experienced in your life. And if you get to bring that back in and, and help them through some of the challenges um, that they're having. And a lot of times, though, it is letting them go through it. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you just got to let go of that rope and let them hit that wall and they go, all right, that sucked, didn't it? <laughs> mm. 
only if someone would have told you sooner and you listened to them, maybe you wouldn't have gone, you know, gone right. through that. But, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of letting them fail. Mm. Uh, I can't keep them bubble wrapped. They got to go off in the world. They got to go off and do their thing. They have to launch. They have to make their mistakes. They have to, you know, be ashamed. They have to cry. Um, and the, probably the biggest thing is, is I let them see me pray. You know, they, they need to know that I need God in my life just as much as they need God in their life. That mm. dad is as big and strong and powerful dad is to them. Uh, dad gets on his knees and prays um, because that's important that, that, you know, one day I'm going to be gone and they need to have that relationship with the father like I do. And that will carry through everything. You know, there's great examples in, in, in the best book ever written. Um, they don't need me. They need to know where to go um, yeah, when that. I'm not there. Hmm. That actually leads into my, my next question there perfectly. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm same way, big believer, you know, faith at the, at the foundation of everything that we do. And that's always led me well. And it sounds like the same thing for you and your family and your business. And I'd be curious how faith has been a business compass for you, uh, being foundational element, both in your business and in life. How do you bring faith into the day-to-day -day decisions as a leader, not only in your household, but in your business? Because I think, you know, sometimes people, they, you know, they walk that fine line. Well, I don't want to talk about religion. I don't want to talk about this. Pol and politics. And from that in there. But how do you infuse yeah. faith into your companies? Uh, effortlessly. You know, um, I live it. So if, you know, and some of the people I talk to, when I start the mentoring process, um, I tell them, I said, listen, we're going to talk about my best friend, Jesus, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes you uncomfortable, we, we need to talk about that right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to stop mentoring you. You can make that choice or not. But, you know, that's everything to me is where, 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 I've in, where I've ended up and where I'm going and the success that you think that I have or, or whatever. None of it's possible without that. Because the way I'm so confident is I know we win. At the end of everything, I know we win. Yeah. Uh, Jesus died on the cross for me and you uh, to have eternal freedom with our God forever and with our loved ones. That is so powerful. Imagine, imagine if you were watching a football game, right? Say you, your favorite team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers or whoever they are, right? Um, you, you couldn't watch it live, so you taped it, all right? And, but you knew through a, a notification on your phone that they won the game. Right, you knew the score. You knew that they won, but you wanted to watch it anyways because you're excited because they won. It was a close game, whatever. And Baker Mayfield throws an interception. Would you be upset? No, because you know that they win. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. You know that at the end of the football game they're going to win. That's the confidence that you need to have as an individual because the biggest battle, the biggest struggle that you'll ever face, has already been conquered. Love that. Life's getting a lot more simple and a lot more easier and a lot more confident when you know you win. You know, mm -hmm. so and 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 some people ask me, you know, Tom, about the faith and the questions you have and all this stuff. I said, Man, I can tell you absolute miracles that have been, been performed in my life. Um, my son, my youngest son, is an absolute miracle of a child. He shouldn't be here, he shouldn't be alive. Um, he was born without the roof of his mouth. And, uh, you know, the palate was missing. And it was a surprise when he was born. We didn't know that was going to happen. And he couldn't breathe. His chest was caving in. Uh, and he was spent a lot of time in, in the emergency room and NICU and we transferred him to Gainesville and uh, spent holidays in there. And it was touch and go. We didn't know he was going to make it. And the doctor said, Tom, you need to understand that he's not going to speak right. And he's not going to be able to have... Um, you know, you'll have learning disabilities and oxygen problems and eating problems and you'll have stunted growth. Um, and, you know, you, we want you to prepare for a long, hard road to that. And, you know, fast forward now, he's 10 years, he's almost 10 years old. And he's never gotten a B in school. He's on the genius level. He can play. And they told me he never, he wouldn't talk. Yep. Right. He sings. 
and can play the guitar and piano by ear effortlessly. And it's because he was probably the most prayed after child that I've ever seen. Yep. We solicited prayers from everybody that would listen to us. If I was in the hallway, I'd say, please pray for me. Pray for my child. I'm in the elevator going up to see him, you know, in the middle of the night. Please pray for my child. And my church, my network, everyone was praying for him. He's an absolute angel. He's a gift. You know, he's a, he's a miracle. Um, so I don't need a whole lot of convincing yep. <laughs> that, that that miracles happen. I I, I changed the diaper of a one. Like I, I I have them. You know. So um, you know. So in business, living that, seeing the power of that, telling those stories. Um, you know, by osmosis, seeing that how that works. And the other people that don't, I always ask them, so how's that working out for you? Yep. Mm. No, absolutely. You know? Yeah. And it, it's a lot of problems and they've got a lot of stress and they've got a lot of, um, a lot of learning to do. God's going to put some, some challenges in you, right. To, 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 to make sure that you know that if you're not doing this alone. All right. So a lot of times on, on the coffee cups, it will say, you know, God won't give you more than you can handle not in the bible it's not a verse anywhere in the bible right but you see that all the time god won't give you any more than you can handle no god's going to give you way more than you can handle to break you down to let you know that you can do it only with him yep no, right? so if you're still having these challenges and you're still having these challenges you're still having challenges why not give god a try you know like maybe he's telling you something that you need him. It's not always just you and your great mind and your gifts and that he's blessed you with, you know, try doing it with him. And and I think there's, that power, there's power in having a miracle mentality in life too. Right. Cause I, I've had just like you, similar experiences with miracle real quick. It, you know, my, my dad, you know, I have a, a brother that's no longer with us was my, um, my half brother. And you know, he found out at an early age, my dad wasn't his real dad. And that separated the relationship, became tumultuous later in life. My dad really took that to heart. Mm. Didn't talk to my brother for years because my brother didn't want to, you know, talk to him. He went down the path of drugs and addiction. And my, I watched my dad for two weeks straight. And you know, he's probably read the Bible a dozen times. And he would stay up till two in the morning, just spending hours and hours praying. You know, it's years he hasn't talked to his son. And I remember it vividly to this Gary, day. right? Yeah, Gary. Gary. Um, all of a sudden, phone rings at about 2.33 a.m. And while he was literally in the bathroom with his Bible praying for this very thing, and it was my brother. And just out of nowhere, for the first time ever, he told my dad, he goes, I just wanted to tell you, you know, my whole life that we've been fighting. And I know we haven't talked in a while. You were always right. And then for the first time in years tells him he loves him and asks him to come pick him up from the bar that he was at and rekindled that relationship. So was that a coincidence to me? I don't think so. You know, as my dad had profound faith and in that moment, while he's literally there with the Bible, he gets that, gets that phone call. And we had another miracle happen in our life where we were told we couldn't have kids. And mm -hmm. uh, we have our little guy it took us maybe 10 years. He's our little miracle child. Uh, I remember this day we prayed on it and then we had, uh, the fertility clinic we went to, we had chance after chance and it just wasn't taking. And I remember we talked to a friend, they're like, Oh, you know what? We use this same person every time. And they've been batting a thousand of us. And it was, you know, another person of faith too. And all of a sudden that morning after praying on it, the person that was the same person that was supposed to do the procedure for our little guy, we only had one shot this time. We didn't have 12, like the last round of IVF. We didn't have like 13. We had one shot. They call in, the guy hurt his back, and the very person that was recommended to us uh, that had the track record ended up stepping in, and then, boom, there was our uh, little miracle baby boy that we had. So, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in, you know, miracles happen all the time, too, yeah. if you got the faith that they're going to happen. Yeah, and I pray. I pray for my customers. I pray for my, my employees and their family. I think it makes a difference. Um, and I'm not saying I have any magical power to steal hurricanes away from places who are not, but yep. um, I definitely uh, pray for the safety of our, our clients and, 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 um, and their families. I think um, being in practice with that, just having a strong voice um, and relationship with God is, is really important. You know, just imagine if you didn't talk to your wife for a month, what kind of relationship would you have? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, but yeah. you only called her like, Hey honey, I need, 
I need, and can you wash my socks for me, please? And, yeah, or if you, you only called on Sundays, you know, for an yeah. hour. Yeah, I well, mean, I you, you wouldn't have a really good relationship. Yep. Um, so, you know, looking for opportunities to have that conversation daily, nightly, um, in the car, in the shower, um, at the dinner table. Take advantage of those moments because you're building a relationship with the father and there's nothing more powerful than that. No, I love that. I love that, brother. Now, I want to take a moment to shift gears a little bit because, you know, one thing that I noticed about you is you're a big innovator and there's a lot of like unique tactics that you leverage in your business. Like, I guess those arrows in your quiver, so to speak, that mm-hmm. allow you to go out there. Um, you know, you got to be the one that executes it. But if you had to attribute maybe the top three things in your business, maybe from a tactical standpoint, a marketing standpoint, that really help you grow your insurance industry, what or grow your insurance agency, what would be some of those top winning solutions that you're currently leveraging today that other people could maybe replicate to get similar wins inside yeah. of their business? It's a really tough question because some people aren't at a $17 million agency and some are lower yep. or bigger. And I have resources that, you know, that, that I'm available today that I didn't have 10 years ago. Um, I'll tell you the one, when I started out, it was relationships. Um, I, I leveraged my relationships, uh, and leverage by itself is massive. You want to be successful in business. You better learn how to leverage, um, everything that you have. And, and I go into detail with that with my people, but, um, building relationships. So you better have a CPA. That's a person and not TurboTax. Uh, you better have a lawyer. That's a person and not rocket lawyer. You better have a physician that's a person and not WebMD. You better have a pastor that's a person and not the Bible app, uh, yeah. which is a good app. But you need people. You need a, a group of people around you um, that you can leverage and you can talk to to actually guide you for who you are in your specific situations. Uh, you don't need a vendor. You need a relationship with the people who own the company. Uh, and they'll give it to you. If you reach out and talk to them uh, most of the time, if they won't probably the wrong company, (laughs) you know? So those relationships um, for me were critical as I started. Um, And I would always tell people, go get more relationships, you know, and and bring value to them. They'll bring value to you. Um, Do business with them. They'll do business with you. And, and and build that. And every time I hit a low in my business, I always go, man, I'm not bringing enough value. I'm not helping enough people. So I go to look at help more people. Um, that's one thing. And then um, being active on social media is, is another thing. Um, you know, I was talking to my wife the other day and said, when we retire, man, I'm just going to, I'm going to change my whole social media strategy. I'm going to defriend everybody, just go off into an island and just chill because uh, it's exhausting sometimes. But then I realized now, nah, it's it's um it's a good time to be alive it's a good time to have the technologies it's a good time for for us three to get together and and have synergy and 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 maybe if someone's listening to this and they want to get closer to somebody here uh reach out and uh, that could be a you know who knows a life could be saved a business could be saved yep right so embracing social media as a strategy uh is a good little arrow in my quiver that that, that I've been able to use uh and to leverage and then um, constantly just having a, a attitude of learning. You know, I want to learn. Do I, I'm, on, I'm on a show right now called Ask the Experts, and I want to know more. Yep. I want to learn more. I'm not done baking in the oven yet. You know, I, I need more ingredients, man. I want to I taste better. I want to be better. I want to get to the next level. You know, so like, and, and, and I guarantee you when I'm there, I'm going to have that same mentality. Yep. It, you know, if I, if I get to be, you know, somewhere, you know, where someone looks at Tom and go, man, that guy made it. I'm going to tell you, I have it. You know, I just have this attitude of, you know, learning more and becoming better constantly. Um, and it's strange because all three of those things that, 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 that I just mentioned, right. Being active on social media, um, having an attitude, of learning and, and education and leveraging relationships, they call, there's no cost to that. Yeah. I think there's, there's, there's two things that are true there. If you, uh, you walk with fools, eventually you'll become one of them. Mm-hmm. And if you choose to walk with the wise, 
eventually you'll become one of them and become mm -hmm. wise. So I think it's, you know, choosing who's around you very carefully. And if you look at that, one of the best examples, you look at all the way from, you know, presidents of countries, generals, uh, big CEOs of some of the biggest countries on earth. What do they have is they have a big cabinet of advisors around them that are wiser and exp have expertise at a different level in specific niches that can help them. Heck, even, even uh, Jesus, you know, he had his disciples, he has his wise men around them. Like I think everybody needs a good cabinet and a good council around them mm -hmm. because you can't know everything about everything and you can't be an expert about everything. But if you place the right people around you, um, you know, you, you can go fast by yourself, but when it comes to going the distance and doing big things, uh, I believe you can't, you can't do it alone. No, absolutely not. You know, and that, and, and if you're watching this and you feel that you're alone, I guarantee you're not, you know, just uh, reach out and help, I'll help you build those networks. You know, you, you want to have real estate agents in your network. You want to have mortgage people in your network. You want to have, um, you know, other business owners that feel struggles like you in your network, um, you know, that you can talk to. And, and number one, you got to have these conversations away from your employees you know, yep. So if you're struggling and all that, you're bringing it to the office. Now they're struggling. Uh, they don't need to feel that. Don't, don't puke on them. You know, go find other people that you can, uh, that they will relate to you um, in confidence. And Lou Holtz said this, and I, I, it's really funny, and I, I, I understand it. Be careful who you complain to. 90% of the people don't care. Yep. And 10% of the people are happy that you have the problem. Yeah. You know, so it's like, and it may be a small percentage of those are actually perpetuating your problem and exploiting yeah. your problem behind the scenes. Correct. You know, cause they want to see you fail, man. They, you know, it's the, it's the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. That's what people pay attention to. Yep. Um, you know, that's the, the worldwide sports and ABC sports back in the day. It was the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Oh you know, yeah. That's what, sure. we, that's what we tune into. Um, we want to see people fail. We want and succeed. Yeah. Just, you know, I think a lot of people would be shocked whether it's a competitor, a non-competitor, like who their haters really are, who their people that are rooting against their success, who they really are. And like the, you know, the answer is, is keep those, uh, keep those people close and keep a close eye on them and make sure you're playing chess while they're playing checkers. A hundred percent, you know, or Fortnite. You have to. <laughs> Sometimes you got to play Fortnite instead of just chess and checkers, but you know, yeah, um, yeah. you know, it's, 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 those 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 kind of um, like I said, the relationships, leveraging relationships, man, and then you know leveraging assets, lever and you know uh, attention is an asset. Um, equity in your business is an asset. Uh, leverage those things. Leverage what you have to get better deals on leads, to get better deals. Um, you know when you go to a car dealership, you know all these things. Like you better learn how to leverage things, or the world's going to run you over. Yeah. And I guess, you know, that'll lead into a good question too, um, is how do you handle opposition? You know, cause sometimes there's a lot of opposition to the mission in life, whether it's a hater, whether it's, um, you know, just, just somebody you think's a friend that's really an enemy behind the scenes and you're doing your thing and you're doing all the right things. But when you have opposition, what have you found the most effective way to handle any sort of opposition in your life and your business, whatever that might, whatever that might be? So um, there's two, two things, right? And, and for me, I know this sounds corny, but I, I have to take it and lay it at the feet of the cross. You yep. know, and I'm going to pray for that person and, and their heart and their intentions. Um, and then at the same time, I ask God to open up my eyes and ears and say, if you're trying to give me a lesson here that I, I need to be aware of, uh, I'm all ears right now and, and I, and I want to know. And then that does create a stressful environment. Yep. Right. When someone's coming after you or attacking you or working against you, um, I'm human. It affects me. You know, even though I've prayed and, and laid it down and, and it's in my head subconsciously, um, you, I better have a good positive release that I can count on that will do positive things for me versus negative things. A lot of people, their first reaction is, let's go to the bar. Yep. I, I, had, a, I had a tough day. I need a drink. All right. I mean, and we all grew up watching the same 80s shows, 90s shows and Al Bundy and, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, you know, like hard, hard day equal to drink. 
Mm -hmm. That's just what we, we, we were brought up learning, you know, and for me, it's a hard day. I'm going to the gym. You yeah, know, that, that's that's where I'm at. I'm working out my demons. I'm working out my stress at the gym. And, you know, I'm getting my lift in. I'm getting a great pump in. I'm going to feel good about myself. So when I walk into the door at home and I've had a tough day, I don't bring that to my kids. I don't bring it to my wife. I've worked that out at the gym. I come home, I'm energized, I'm focused because home is going to bring more stress and problems also. That doesn't, you know, the, <laughs> and if some people have a good life with that and it doesn't bring them stress, awesome, you know, but uh, if you have kids and you've got, you know, a, a kitchen table, you got to sit down and look at bills and look at all these different things, it yep. can get stressful. So if you combine your work stress with your home stress, that's not going to work out. So you better have a good release of what it, and it could be for some people taking a walk on the beach, right? It could be horseback riding. It could be, um, you know, uh, all these different things that are positive that you can find a release in to deal with that. But no, I'm a firm believer in that too. It's like really taking yeah. a negative and what you're doing is you're reframing it into a positive. What I like to do with those people knowing that, Hey, if I continue to do all the right things and I keep hustling and if I convert that person, maybe that was a hater or whatever it might be, the opposition and I convert them to fuel, then I'm just going to double down on what I'm doing and I'm going to give them one heck of a show knowing that they don't have the standing power to keep up with me. And then one day they're going to be so far in my freaking rear view that like they'll just be a blip on everything. And what yeah. I got to say to that is good morning to everybody except the haters. <laughs> <laughs> right and, and 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 you know they're gonna say man oh that guy i know i know dave I remember oh, yeah, dave. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's it's quickly oh, yeah. how it's it's funny how quickly they change their tune absolutely yeah you know i mean but um that's natural and, and people have uh, you know there's we live in a big world and everyone's in different stages of their life i yep. was an immature jerk before i was a pump i'm, you know, I'm still might be a little immature from time to time but <laughs> You know, I'm working on it, but there's, there's, you're going to encounter people in different phases of their life. Not everyone's going to be an evolved human that is thinking outside the box and that is mindful and, 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 you know, wanting the best for people. Uh, you got yep. selfish people, you got people who are hurt, you got people that are hurting. Um, so just understand that, you know, what they're going through, um, you, you don't know the whole story. Yep. You know, you don't know the whole story and, and you probably won't, um, but you better have a way of dealing with yourself or you're going to be part of their story. And that's not really, really what anyone wanted. Um, so you got to figure out how, how to get out of that and, and move them to the side. So you yep. get back to what, what, what fuels you, what focuses you to your success. Cause it's never going to be the haters. It's just the haters that you're <laughs> that are fueling you. Oh no. Totally. Uh, then, then man, it's um, gotta be the purpose. It's gotta be the passion. It's gotta be that. Right. Down. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Like that, that, that's that. where, you know, you got to reset and go back to, but you got to deal with those people, you yep. know, cause they exist. Oh, hundred percent. And now as we're uh, winding the rest of the show, I wanted to, you know, thank you so much for being on brother. This has been just tons of knowledge for everybody. And it's been a, an honor and a pleasure to have you on here. Make sure everybody gives some love in the chat. If you're watching it live or you're watching the rerun with Mr. Patterson, but I'd like to ask you before we get into, cause I want to give you an opportunity, how people can maybe work with you, how they can follow you. Um, but if you had, one or two last pieces of final advice like and you thought about it through the lens like hey you know what i'm gonna wake up and maybe not be here tomorrow and i could leave the world with like a couple pieces of wisdom that would best serve them throughout their life best serve them in their business and it was part of the legacy that you stood for what would those final maybe couple pieces of wisdom be for everybody that's uh listening now okay if you're in a position to help somebody do it, hmm. you know, if, if, if you're in a position to help someone do it, yes, they may take advantage of you. Right. And, and they may overstep and all that, but good will always come around. If you do that, every time I've had a bad section in my business where we're, where we had a dip and had a reset, I go back and say, I need to go help more people, not quote more people, not get more leads. I need to go help more people. I need to go talk to um, a, a rehab 
I need to go talk to some people that are struggling. I need to go help someone that, um, you know, is, is in, is in need somewhere, donate money, something. Uh, and like I said, there's no KPI for that. There's no metric to track for it, but 100% of the time it works. The biggest year I've had success, um, and you know, pinnacle elite and all that good stuff. I was also nominated for the Ray Lynch award that same year. So I was doing, so I was on every board I could be a part of. I was yep. coming up with solutions for people. I was helping more people, but I also had the best year that I ever had up until now. But, and, and most people think that, that you can't help people all the time and also help yourself, that they're two separate things and they're the same thing. Yep. They are the same thing. So I would encourage people to, if you're in a position to help someone, go do it. Um, and you and watch God work in your life for that. You know, that's, you know, we, we want to, um, you know, go make disciples and, 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 and bring people closer. Living that out is, is the way to do that. No, I love that. Love that. Great answer. And, uh, you know, lastly, I wanted to give you the opportunity, how to, you know, how to, people work with you how do they find you how do they follow you and what does working with you look like yeah so holler at me uh instagram uh tom patterson you can search tom patterson uh facebook tom patterson uh in our um closed group uh for only all state agents i only work with all state agents i believe blue i only want to help the, our group out um so if you're an all state agency owner and want to work with me uh you can join the evolve to elite facebook group uh, you can contact me through there, uh, reach out um, and, and give me a DM. I am not currently taking any more um, coaching um, um, opportunities right now. I'm full. Uh, I do have a waiting list to get on. So if you want to reach out and get on the waiting list, um, um, please do that. Uh, so I can, when, when, when a spot opens up, happy to do that. And then I also do a lot of things for free, man. Like I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell people to go help people. And then when someone comes to me with a problem, or an issue, not help them. Um, yeah. You know, so if you got a question about how I do things or how, you know, if you want me to come talk to your sales team or, or your group or your, or, you know, uh, if you're a part of a nonprofit, you want me to help talk to them, I'm, I'm happy to do that. There's zero charge um, for me to do that. I'm, I'm put on this earth to help as many people as possible. And I'm not going to turn down an opportunity to do that. So, um, you know, happy to help any way I can. Love that. Love that. Well, no, thank you so much for spending the time with us today and uh, giving your valuable time to all the listeners here today. Again, whether they're watching live, whether they're watching the rerun, I think it was, you know, knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb that was dropped today for those that are paying attention and, you know, just took action on just a few of the things that you were talking about here today that I think their life in their business could get dramatically better. So, you know, thank you so much for uh, your time with us today. And thank you so much to all the listeners that are out there and attending another episode of Ask the Experts. We'll see you guys next week, same day, same time, same channel, same insurance syndicate group, where we're going to have another expert on teaching you a thing or two about a thing or two. But until then, uh, we'll catch you next week.